Hey, everybody, and welcome to Lifestyle Today. I'm your host, Justine Santanello. I know this time of year can get quiet, cold, and I'm going to say it, boring. So instead, let's focus on the fun things that are coming up. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. The big game, of course, is approaching. And my personal favorite, the puppy ball. On February 12th, Team Ruff will take on Team Fluff and Puppy Bowl Ruffery. I can't. Dan Schachner is joining us now to tell us all about the game. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Can you tell I'm excited? I can tell. I, I, I love the enthusiasm. And we're still a little while before the big game, but exactly. it's coming. It's this is coming. like our pep rally. Exactly. And I wanted to have some time with you first before we bring in... Calm before the storm. So that we can really chat because once these puppies get here, yep. I can't promise you anything. So a fun fact that people might not know actually about you, that you actually worked in the NFL. Is that correct? <laughs> so as is this not correct? Wait, wait, wait. I love that this is becoming like a, a, like a fact out there. I joked once on social that uh, the, I was fired from the NFL. And here's why. Let me just, let me backtrack. Um, uh -oh. I always get asked a million times, how did you get this job? Because yeah. it's like a dream job for so many people, right? It is like, really. Though. I love this job. And I got tired of saying, well, I auditioned for it just like anything else. Like I, Animal Planet knew me as a host. I okay. hosted for so many years for them, for HGTV, variety of different networks. And they were like, do you want to come do this audition? I made a tape and that was it. Um, but I got so tired of that same, <laughs> that same answer. This is not true. That one day I was just like, well, I got fired from the NFL. I used to coach human football, but I was too <gasps> soft on the players because I was cuddling with them all the time. That's the quote yeah, we yeah. heard. You were too soft <laughs> for the human player. So you went to the puppy ball. I cannot believe. Sorry. I also used to say that instead of, that I worked my way up to dogs, that I started off officiating oh. goldfish, then hamsters, then guinea pigs. Well, don't you guys use in the puppy bowl other animals yes. to do the halftime show, right? Halftime show is kittens, also adoptable. Yes. Well, thank you. I was going to say, so the whole point, right, of the puppy yeah. bowl is to bring awareness to rescue dogs. Yes. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? So, you know, we started, we're Puppy Bowl 19 now. So 19 nice. years ago, we began, because, you know, the other big game, uh, we knew we really couldn't compete with it. You sure. know, it's hard to. So why not just throw up a, a bunch of puppies playing on a little grass field and see what happens? And it blew up. It became a huge hit. Yeah. And so year after year, we have millions of people watching. I want to know also from you, you know, you said before that there are dogs who are a little bit older, maybe, yeah. right? And dogs who have special needs. Yeah. So tell us about that. How did those dogs play in to the puppy bowl? Right. So the oldest that they'll be is six months of age because, you know, it's three to six months to be on puppy bowl. We have some vets, some old veteran players that come back and do oh special appearances and stuff like that. So they're just there as honorary guests, okay. you know, pro bowl type players coming back, old timers day, if you I will, love it. which is awesome. Uh, then, of course, with the special needs dogs, I'm proud to say this year we have 11 special needs Amazing. dogs. Yeah, it's a huge amount for us. We started with just a few to see what would happen. And sure. then um, one year, not too long ago, a special needs dog, Bumble, who was sight and hearing impaired, won the MVP. And VP is voted on, okay? As people okay. watch Puppy Bowl, they kind of like- They vote in real in time. Yeah, amazing. Real time. So, you know, the MVP was crowned. It was an amazing moment. And we said, wait a second, you know? And it wasn't just, this was not going to be a one-time thing. We had to incorporate them. Of course. So now 10%, and hopefully next year it'll be 20%. But the idea is to show that these, you know, these special needs dogs can do whatever the quote-unquote able-bodied dogs can do. Uh, the ones to look out for this year, there's so many, but look out for Joey, who's only got- uh, two back legs. Oh, excuse me, two front legs. Wow. He's in a little wheelchair. He's doing great. Oh, my goodness. Um, then, you know, look out for Minnie, who's a tripod. Um, sadly, you know, also lost a leg. Uh -huh. We've also got Marmalade, Marmalade and Julius, who are hearing impaired. Again, their safety is paramount. Oh so gosh. when they're on the set, you know what I mean? Like, we make sure that they are totally fine. But to see them running around the field is incredible. Wow. This is fascinating. I have so many questions. Yeah, and I got some surprise guests coming on. I'm so excited. So you guys are going to want to stick around because Dan's going to be back later in the show with some puppies. We're going to play some games. We're going to love on them, get in the puppy bowl spirit. You might want to change that outfit. Just I saying. Think, I think so. I think so. Don't go away. <laughs> 